So should you be doing velocity banking during this crisis? Okay, that is a fantastic question and we're gonna talk about it here in today's video. Hey everyone, it's Mike Adams, and on this channel, we empower individuals to achieve freedom through improved financial literacy. If you are new to the channel, make sure to click subscribe and click the bell, so that way you get notified on any and all of our future content. So in today's video, guys, we're gonna be discussing, should you be doing the velocity banking strategy during this crisis, okay? And this is a big time question, okay? Obviously, it's a very hot topic right now, and um, you know, to start, hopefully all of you guys are following all the guidelines regarding this virus. This is obviously a very, very serious thing that's going on. And uh, our kids uh, here in Minnesota, like schools are shut down and we've had them here in the house and you know, we're just kind of laying low. And so hopefully you guys are all doing the same. Um, but because of this you know, pandemic that we're dealing with, we're seeing some big time issues in the economy. So, you know, should you be doing velocity banking? You know, if you're someone out there that's, you know, using the strategy, you know, should debt reduction be, you know, at the forefront of your goals right now, you know, during this crisis? And so I've had a ton of people reach out to me and ask me this. So, you know, I want to just create a piece of content here and kind of get this discussion going. And to start, you know, what I would say is obviously this is a very, very serious thing. And the number one thing you know, that you really always, and, and really always, you know, need to be concerned about is taking care of, of your, your priorities, right? And in time of crisis, you know, what are your priorities? You know, it's, it's family, it's shelter, it's food, it's water, it's utilities, you know? Uh, those are the core things that you really need to survive. And that is always going to come first, you know, not to get political, but that's going to trump, uh, you know, really anything else, you know, that, that you need to pay for. You know, if your choice is, okay, pay down the credit card bill or pay for my kids to eat food, you know, obviously this one's gonna win out, you know, every single time, cause you gotta feed your family. And so, you know, that that is gonna take priority. So, you know, should you be focused on completely paying down debt? You know, and again, I wish I could just say, you know, for everybody across the board, yay or nay, but that's not the case. You know, just like with so many different strategies that are out there, you know, there's not a one size fits all approach uh, to most strategies and velocity banking is no different. Some people should continue on, you know, leveraging velocity banking to knock down their debt and focus on, you know, positioning themselves um, for potential buying opportunities that are coming around right now. But for others in different scenarios, it may make sense to put some of that on hold and do something different with your cash flow. And so I guess for starters, guys, you know, we don't want to, you know, completely derail our long term goals due to short term fears. Okay. And obviously, you know, there's plenty to be afraid about, you know, the market is showing that there's a ton of fear right now, the ups and downs were below 20,000. Uh, as of the recording of this video, and uh, first time in since uh, 2017. So it's been uh, several years now since we've been below that point. And so it's, it's dipping down. And so you know, there's a lot of things to be you know, just uncertain. And there's a lot of fear out there. But does that mean we want to completely derail all of our long term goals? So, so we don't necessarily want to do that. But depending on your particular situation, right, you may need to push the pause button, okay, on your debt reduction plan and focus on using your cash flow in a different way. And so, you know, here's you know a couple of reasons why you might want to put velocity banking on pause. You know, number one is if you're you know, and again, if you're doing velocity banking, you are uh, cash flow positive. That's one of the prerequisites of even doing the strategy. So you are cash flow positive. So you're making, uh, bringing in more money than you spend. But however, you know, maybe your situation is changing. You know, there's a lot of jobs out there right now. And I, I saw a number, almost 20% of jobs um, are either dealing with you're, you're laid off, right? You're not working um, or B you're dealing with some type of reduction uh, in hours, you know, things like that. So you have less income coming in, which could, you know, take you from a positive cash flow situation into a negative cash flow situation. And which, which is definitely, um, you know, definitely a concern. And if you're somebody that has that type of concern right now, um, the number one thing you need to focus on is you know, ways to increase that income, to keep your income levels uh, where you're used to them being. And also, you know, obviously watch those expenses so that way you can maintain positive cash flow and stay in a position where, again, at least you have positive cash flow and you can do something with those funds. Now, should those funds be used uh, directly for debt reduction during this time? 
you know, one thing to help you make that decision for yourself, you know, ask yourself this question, you know, do you have an emergency fund? Okay. And an emergency fund is typically three to six months of all of your expenses. So let's say you had, you know, $3,000 a month in expenses, or let's bump it up. Let's say you had $5,000 a month in expenses. You know, you would want to have at least 15,000 up to 30,000, you know, 30,000 preferred. Okay. Sitting in a liquid, you know, call it a savings account. I, I don't want, you know, uh, you don't necessarily want to put it under the mattress per se, uh, with the fed cutting rates, maybe you do, but you know, uh, regardless, you know, in, in a savings account where you have immediate access to those funds, um, if you don't have an emergency fund, okay. And, and, and especially if you're in, in a job or in a position where you could deal with layoffs, you could deal with a reduction in hours, or maybe you're already dealing with that. You need to make sure that you have that emergency fund in place. So, you know, if you're dealing with potential layoffs or you're dealing with potential reductions, you may want to put velocity banking on pause to really stockpile those cash reserves. Okay. And, and again, plain and simple, if you don't have three to six months of cash reserves in place, you're going to want to create that. And so if you have good, strong, positive cash flow right now, maybe, and again, I'm saying maybe because again, for some folks, they're still going to want to attack the debt. Okay, you know, the bottom line, the reason that we use velocity banking is because, you know, if we're leveraging a line of credit, you're putting your income into that line and you still have access to the line. But here's, again, one thing that we know about market uncertainty and, and during crisis, you know, back in 2008, you know, what we know is that that's when a lot of, you know, HELOCs, you know, got shut down. That's when, you know, lines of credit either got shut down or reduced, okay? And, and I'm not saying that because it's going to happen this time around, but it's something that there's just an extra risk factor there. You know, when the economy is kind of reeling like this, you know, something that you have to realize is there's a, there's a, a greater risk when the market is in this type of turmoil. Now, do I think, and again, obviously I'm not an economist, you know, I'm just Mike and you know, this is just my opinion on it, but I believe that this market you know, um, you know, crisis uh, is much, much different than what we saw in 2008. You know, in 2008, there was big time issues with the bank, a lot of terrible, terrible debt out there. There was these crazy types of loans that, um, you know, uh, people were, you know, and people were just defaulting left and right. And it was, it was a different scenario brought on by a different set of circumstances. So I think this is a different type of crash than what we saw in 08. So does, you know, but again, does that mean for sure that your line of credit isn't going to get shut down? Does that mean for sure that your HELOC isn't going to get shut down or they're going to reduce your available credit? Again, it's, it's impossible for, for me or anybody else to truly say, but just know that there's some additional risks there with the market kind of going up and down like this. So in this scenario, again, if you don't have that emergency fund in place, if you're maybe in a job where, Hey, you know, you could get laid off or you're already dealing with some type of reduction in your income, you know, perhaps it's best to put velocity banking on pause and just essentially stack that cash, you know, putting it into, you know, uh, again, for lack of a better uh, tool, uh, you know, for this video, um, you know, putting it into a bank savings where you just have immediate access to that capital and, and ride this thing out, you know, make all your payments, of course. Okay. But take your additional cash flow and hold on to it in a bank savings account. Okay. And again, we know, uh, again, the fed just cut rates again. We'll talk about that in some other videos that we're going to create here. Uh, but the fed cut rates again. So obviously we know we're not making money, uh, in these savings accounts. Okay. Even high yield, you're not making money compared to inflation, things like that. Uh, but again, in this type of scenario, in this type of economy, you know, maybe debt reduction isn't the most important thing. And you might want to hold on to that, uh, to build up those cash reserves. Now, if you are somebody that does have that in place, like let's say you're in a position where you, you are able to work from home or you have your own business and you know, you're able to continue to make money, um, you know, regardless of what's going on here. And let's say you have, you know, your six months of expenses, you know, in your savings account at the bank and you're good to go and your cash flow positive and, and things are still pretty much the same for you. Well, in that situation, you know, if your goal and in fact, you're using velocity banking, your goal is debt reduction, eliminating the debt, then in your situation, it might make sense to continue on using the strategy and keep applying that cash flow to your debt, knocking it down. You'll pay down those lines of credit, grab more chunks, pay that down. Okay. 
And from there, focus on positioning yourself for potential buying opportunities. And again, um, you know, what we know is when, when, when we like to buy is when things are cheap and things have been very, very expensive for a long time, okay? And things are gonna be essentially on sale uh, to where, you know, if this market continues to trend down, you know, and again, I can't say for sure if this is the bottom, you know, 19, let me see, 199 uh, today. Um, you know, I, I can't say for sure that this is the bottom. It could certainly go down further. But if you are in position where you got, you know, all your necessities taken care of, you're not concerned about your cash flow going down, and you have the, you know, reserves in place to where even if they did go down, you could weather the storm, you know, for three to six months you know, hey, maybe it still makes sense to knock down your debt levels so that way you are in the best possible buying uh, position for potential buying opportunities that are gonna be coming around here throughout uh, between now and uh, the end of the year because they're definitely gonna be available. So I'm definitely curious as well to hear your guys' thoughts. If you're out there right now and you're doing velocity banking, you know, what are you doing? You know, are you, um, you know, putting the pause button on that and holding on to some of your cash? Or are you still maintaining and knocking down your debt levels to put yourself in a better buying position? Yeah, I'd love for some of you guys to share your stories and personal experience of what you're doing to help others on this channel. And again, hopefully you guys got value in this discussion and in this training today. If you did, make sure to give the video a like, give it a comment below, and I will see you in the next video.